Vigorous intensity exercise is great for that reason, but it's also great because it is a way of improving our cardiorespiratory fitness, our cardiovascular health. And so cardiorespiratory fitness is a measure of, it's usually measured in terms of VO2 max, as you know, and it's the maximal amount of oxygen that you can take in during maximal exercise. And um, cardiorespiratory fitness is really a marker. I personally think it's now, you know, emerging data over the last five years or so has proven that is probably the strongest marker we have of longevity today. You know, there's a lot of Mm -hmm. people out there looking at X, Y, Z biomarker, your epigenetic age, you know, lots of different aging clocks or your blood glucose levels, lots of different things that you can look at. But it turns out that cardiorespiratory fitness really is the prominent marker for longevity. Hmm. So if you're someone that's doing endurance exercise, like if you're an elite athlete, you know, these people are training like, what, 30 hours a week? Yeah, on average. On average. Yeah. For the majority of people that are really just sort of interested in health and fitness and perhaps, you know, don't have a lot of time to work out a lot, you know, they're barely trying to meet the minimum requirement of two and a half hours a week of moderate intensity exercise, let's say, uh, they're they're really they're 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 limited by time constraints, let's say, and but they want to improve their VO2 max. They want to improve their cardiorespiratory fitness. So what kind of exercise do they engage in to improve their cardiorespiratory fitness? So if you're doing something like 30 hours a week, you know, that that is something that's, you know, you're you're splitting your time between doing cardiovascular endurance training, but also some high intensity interval training. You're doing some vigorous intensity exercise along with that as well. So you're kind of covering all the bases. But for people that are not doing such long hours of training, there have been studies that have shown that even people that are meeting the two and a half hours of moderate intensity exercise, you know, per week, if they're only doing this sort of zone two training, you know, where they're not really going into that vigorous zone, um, a lot of up to 40% of people have a hard time improving their VO2 max Mm -hmm. and they're called non-responders. And so why is that? Why are they not responding to, you know, cardiovascular, just simple endurance training, 70% max heart rate, let's say, or below. So about moderate intensity exercise. And um, it's not really known why, but it's thought that the stress isn't great enough to cause the adaptations to allow them to improve their VO2 max. And so when you take those non-responders and then have them engage in vigorous intensity exercise, then they're able to improve their cardiorespiratory fitness. Again, coming down to that adaptation where you're putting a greater stress on the cardiovascular system and therefore your body is responding to that stress with a a variety of different beneficial, you know, response pathways. And so VO2 max, I I would say, again, as a marker of longevity, one of the best ways you can improve that is by engaging in vigorous intensity exercise. Mm -hmm. So that would be kind of the long-winded answer to the different types of, you know, endurance versus kind of more vigorous intensity exercise and why I think there there's differences, but also, you know, there's some overlap as well. And what, what do we know, again, another like, what do we know or not know about um, the the impact of uh, vigorous exercise versus endurance exercise on moving the needle on cardiovascular health? I mean, they're both good for cardiovascular health, right? You know, like I, what I was mentioning was the cardiorespiratory fitness aspect. And the reason I was mentioning that is because almost half the population isn't responding to that if they're just doing the sort of moderate intensity exercise where they're doing 70% their max heart rate for two and a half hours a week. I like to mention that because it seems as a sizable part of the population really does need a little bit more stress for their body to adapt for mm-hmm. whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that that's well understood, but what is understood of that is does it occur? And so, you know, I do think Again, you don't want to compare apples to oranges. So like a lot of times we'll look at what these endurance athletes are doing and they're doing a lot of zone two exercise, right? But they're doing a lot of it. So I don't think you can compare someone who's doing over 10 hours a week to two. Yeah, I mean, yeah, nobody should really look at that as as a benchmark to decide what they're going to do. And, you know, those people... Their zone two is very unlike the average person's zone two because they're, because they've been doing it for so many years and they've built this huge base. Like the, their kind of like pace that they're able to maintain, um, would be, you know, beyond the threshold of an average person. So they're, they're putting a, a, even though they're cardiovascularly, they can handle it. They're, they are putting 
an additional strain on their ligaments and their muscles and things like that. That's very different from the average person. Before we move on to microplastics, I think a good place to end this section of the podcast is to kind of explain specifically what vigorous exercise is or high intensity training. Like what would a routine be for somebody who's never done this before? Or where can somebody find examples of routines uh, to begin this journey. Okay. So um, there's a lot of examples of what a high intensity interval routine would be depending on like what kind of interval you're looking for, what kind of outcome you're trying to improve, whether that's improving your cardiorespiratory fitness, your VO2 max, or you wanting to really get that BDNF increase because there's studies that have really been shown to do to do both of those things. So I would say in terms of the VO2 max improvements, what's been shown to to be the most beneficial is the Norwegian 4x4 protocol that I mentioned, because for whatever reason, the longer intervals of, of, of going as hard as you can for a longer period of time, this is not all out. It's as hard as you can go and maintain for that duration of four minutes, right? And so it's going to be different for everyone, but you kind of have to pace yourself. And you and is do that, that something you do on a treadmill or a stationary bike or a rowing machine? You can do it on any of them. Um, I, I've been doing it on a rowing machine, but um, it was actually, I think, you know, stationary bikes or what some of these other uh, studies have shown as well. Um, people can do running on a treadmill. I mean, it really, you can kind of pick what you want. But the idea is you want to do four minutes as at the intensity at the highest intensity that you can maintain for that four minutes, which is not all out. You do recovery for three minutes at a very low intensity. And then you do that and you repeat it four times. So you do it four times. It's called the Norwegian four by four. That's been shown to be one of the best ways to improve cardiorespiratory fitness. And in that study where the heart aging was reversed by 20 years, those people did it once a week. Mm. And so you can do that once a week. That's great. Um, I do it on a Concept Two rower, but um, you can do it on a, on a on a bike. You can do it, you know, whatever whatever it is that works well for you that you will be consistent in doing that. Now, I should also point out if you've never really done high intensity interval training before, you're going to start out probably going a lot slower for your interval, and that's fine because you're you going to have to because your your capacity to recover during the rest aspect of the interval is not going to be, you know, that great, right? So if you go too hard on the first one, you're not going to make it through the rest of the set. Exactly. Yeah. Um, And so for people that are interested in, there's, like I said, there's a lot of different protocols out there for vigorous intensity exercise, improving a variety of different parameters. Um, I do have a free guide called How to Train According to the Experts. And it's really according to all the experts that I've interviewed in my podcast in terms of like the different protocols for training and what they've been shown to improve. It's all evidence-based. People can find that out at howtotrainguide.com. And that's just a free cool. guide. That's It's that's got awesome. all the different protocols. And then there's another protocol for the BDNF. So that would be what you can do to increase your brain-derived neurotrophic factor. There's also a variety of protocols that have been shown to do that. One of them is going at at least 80 to 85% your max heart rate for 20 to 30 minutes. And um, that, I believe, was running, but I... You'd have to check. I have a, a free guide on that. And that that guide is called bdnfprotocols.com. And it's a variety of different protocols that have been you know, shown to increase brain-derived neurotrophic factor if people are really specifically looking for that type of protocol, which is something, like I said, I myself am interested in looking at. 